What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. After skipping last week's episode due to being on vacation, we are back in action with another round of iOS 16 and Apple news goodness. So we're going to be discussing some additional iOS 16 features and what I think about updating on your main device along with what's going on with iOS 15. And then after we talk about software, we're going to discuss the latest iPhone 14 leaks, why Johnny Ive and Apple are now fully broken up, how you could get free money from Apple if you bought a MacBook from 2015 to 2019, and more. And if you guys wanna stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. All right, so let's start with even more new features and changes found in iOS 16 public beta and the beta three re-release for developers. So the first thing is on the lock screen, you will now notice that the album artwork shows up big. It takes up the entire background of your lock screen now on iOS 16. So we saw this at WWDC, but it was not included in the first three betas, only in the re-release in the public beta. So you could also tap on that to make it go back to small where you can see your lock screen and your widgets again. You have the option, the flexibility to do that, which is really nice. Now it does also work for videos. So if I start playing a video right here and go to my lock screen and you tap on it, you will see the thumbnail shows up big right there as well. And the background kind of adjusts to the colors in the thumbnail or the album artwork. And I love this. So I'm sure Apple will make more tweaks to this, but it works pretty well right now. Also, if we go into our settings and go to accessibility and then all the way down to accessibility shortcut, we have a few new accessibility shortcuts right here. So we have Apple Watch mirroring, we have control nearby devices, and we also have live captions. So those three are new here in this third beta of iOS 16. And this of course just allows you to access these features by triple pressing on the side button. So if we triple press the side button right here, you will see we get the option now, the menu to pull up what we want to do. Apple Watch mirroring, control nearby devices, or live captions. So if I just tap on this, you can see it will pull up whatever action I specified here. This update also finally adds support for the AVIF image format, so AVIF image format on both iOS and Mac OS. And speaking of photos, we have a couple of other changes here in the photos application. So first off, the empty album icon, that glyph icon there is different than it was on previous versions. It used to be bigger. Now it's a little bit smaller and a little bit changed. Also, if you have to press on an image or a video, you will now get the option to move to shared library. So I talked about the shared library before, but now we get that option in the haptic press menu. If we head back into our settings and go to focus and then go to any focus mode where you have not already already set an Apple watch face and you will notice that the image here is actually animated now. So you will see the seconds little clock there, the seconds little hand moving while you have it empty. So if you chose a watch face, of course that will go away. But if you've not chosen one, you will see an animated image there instead of just a regular standard image like these two. And the mail application, if you block a sender, you will now see a little red icon underneath the date indicating that you have indeed blocked that sender. Now, if we head back into our settings and go to Wi-Fi, you will see that we now have an edit button up there and at the top right hand corner. And from here, you're able to delete any of your previously connected networks. So any known network, you are now able to delete right here. Now, I wish there was a toggle where you can delete multiples at a time, but if you tapped on the little arrow right here, it will allow you to delete that known network right there. That way you will have to reconnect and re-enter the password next time. It's great for troubleshooting. I use this while on vacation. I mentioned this feature before, but I wanted to mention it again because I did just use it on vacation to troubleshoot and it allowed me to connect to those networks with no issue. And then of course, if you needed to get the password for that Wi-Fi network, just tap on the I right here and tap on password and you will see the password for that Wi-Fi network. Now, if we head into the find my application and go to the items tab, you will notice a change here after updating to iOS 16 public beta and also iOS 15.6. And that is the Apple is actually removed the AirTag battery level indicator from the application unless it is low on battery. So you can see here, my backpack is low on battery. So it shows the battery indicator right there real big. It's bigger this time as well than it was in past versions. So this is an over the air update. So it applies to everybody, but you can see there it shows the low battery, but it does not show the battery level at all of any of my other three 
air tags right here. And if I tap on the air tag with low battery, you could see here we have a new little indicator here that says low battery. Some features aren't available. And you also have the option there, the button to click on replace battery, which will take you to this splash screen right here that shows you how to replace the battery in the air tag. And speaking of iOS 15.6, we also have the charging fix for the iPad mini six. So I did mention that in my what's new video, but it was not confirmed until after I published that video. So if you did have any issues with your device, just simply not detecting a charger and not detecting that it was going to be charging, then you should update to iOS 15.6 or the latest build of iOS 16 because it has been fixed. Also in iOS 15.6, if you go into your settings here and then go to notifications and then go all the way down to the bottom, we now have test alerts. So I talked about this in my iOS 16 beta three video, but this is also now available on iOS 15.6. So you will get government test alerts if you have that toggle turned on. And then another new feature that doesn't really have anything to do with your iOS version is that YouTube picture in picture is finally back. So now if you're watching a video and you go out of it, you will see that you have picture in picture for the iPhone on YouTube. So the native YouTube application, and of course you can swipe it over, swipe it back onto the screen. You can multitask while watching a video. Me personally, I don't like this just because I have YouTube premium and I can always listen to music in the background or listen to the video in the background. I just find that picture in picture gets in the way but that is now an option here and if you go into your settings here go to settings general and then down a little bit you will see we have picture in picture right there so make sure that is turned on i did also make a video on how to apply picture in picture for youtube so i will leave that linked down in the description below but you do not need youtube premium for this to work as you can see up here i'm not on my premium account and it still works just fine oh and also in these settings we now finally have the use device theme for the appearance so it's now not locked to light or dark mode all the time, you could do it based on the theme of your device, which is long overdue for the YouTube app. Now, as far as bugs go, since I have been using iOS 16 public beta on my main device here, I have started to notice more bugs than I had been previously. And the first thing I wanted to mention is that the Apple Music application is back to crashing. Yes, here we go again. Apple Music is crashing once again. So here's a screen recording I did of when I try to play a song, it just simply crashes and I did submit the this as feedback to Apple, but you can see here every time I open up my music application and I go into the now playing screen and I even give it a second a couple times and I try to press on play, you can see I can go to the album you know, or the artist right away. But when I try to play, it just simply crashes on me. And I get this message right here where it says it closed unexpectedly. So I'm having that issue a lot now on Apple Music. It was good in beta two. It didn't happen in beta two or the original beta three. But after the re-release in the public beta, for whatever reason, it started crashing again. So hopefully Apple gets it together and fixes those issues. Now I'm also having a bug where some of my notifications will just simply disappear. So I can't really explain this, but sometimes the notifications will disappear, especially when I'm switching between the styles so like if I go into my settings here then to notifications I notice that when I have it as a count I notice that my notifications disappear a lot more than on stack or list so just keep that in mind for now that should bypass any type of issue where you have notifications disappearing now also I am also having the keyboard disappearing sometimes. So sometimes in applications, the keyboard will completely disappear. I'm still able to type, but I cannot see the keys. I cannot see the keyboard while I'm typing. It's pretty strange, but it's happened a few times. And also I'm having a lot of bugs and a lot of crashes with the Instagram and also with the TikTok applications. So I find this happens in Instagram more than TikTok, but both are crashing pretty consistently, probably about once a day, once every two days on my iOS 16 public beta device. Also, sometimes when I'm in the photos application and I tap on edit right here, the photos application will crash. So this only happened to me one time, but it is something to keep in mind. You may see that on iOS 16 as well. Also, sleep mode has finally been fixed in the public beta. So you can see here when you swipe up, we don't have that weird gray opaque, you know, overlay here over the notifications. So it's now back to normal. It's just a little bit darker, but it doesn't look really weird like it did on previous versions. And when it comes to overheating, it seems like the public beta has actually fixed any type of issue related to overheating. So it doesn't happen for me at all on my iPhone 13 series. So my 13 Pro or 13 Pro Max or my iPads, my iPads don't heat 
speed up like at all. I find that I only have overheating issues really on the iPhone 8 and sometimes on the iPhone 10. But aside from that, I'm not getting overheating anymore on my iPhone 13 series, which is nice. And because I'm not getting much overheating, the battery life has also improved a little bit, very slightly here on the public beta. So I don't think it's good by any means. I definitely don't think it's on par with iOS 15, but the battery life does seem to be a little bit better than it was on the original beta 3 release and also the previous two betas. So it is getting better, but I would expect it to get even better you know, on the second public beta. We should start seeing slow, gradual improvements to the battery life over the next couple of months. And then as far as performance goes, aside from those occasional crashes with the music application, with Instagram and with TikTok and sometimes the photos application, aside from that, everything is pretty good. I mean, I am still having some minor issues when setting the lock screen background and just messing around with the lock screen widgets, but that is a brand new feature, so that is kind of expected, really not anything too major. I haven't had really any crashes like device crashes where my device just completely respring's it has happened to me one time you know since i updated to the public beta but it's a lot less than it did on beta 1 or beta 2. i have seen some people say they have kernel panics every day but i don't think that's normal so if you are having that you may just want to try a restore but overall performance not bad if you can stand those crashes and of course battery life is going to be the main thing that you may not want to update for that's like the main thing i would say to hold off on until the second public beta if you're wanting to install it on your main device all right so now let's talk about what to expect next from apple so next up is ios 16 developer beta 4 and public beta 2 and both of those should be coming next week the week of July 25th so the final week of July we should be seeing both now we could also be seeing iOS 15.7 beta one so we could see that start as early as next week as well and we don't know for sure that a 15.7 is coming but we still do have a couple of months before ios 16 releases because of course ios 16 the final release is in september alongside the new iphones so i would expect to see a 15.7 or a 15.6.1 of course if it is a 15.6.1 we're not going to see any betas for that since it is a double point update but if it is a 15.7 we should see those betas start either next week or the following week and keep in mind we did have an ios 14.8 so a 15.7 is definitely not out of the question all right so now let's move on to the latest apple news first up let's talk some more about the iphone 14 so you know how we've been talking about the supply chain issues pretty much all year and how the iphone 14 might have limited supply at first well, that's probably not going to be the case. So Ming-Chi Kuo predicts that the supply issues will have a very limited impact on mass production. He said this, I have learned that recently some iPhone 14 panel and memory suppliers have experienced supply issues, but it should have a limited impact on the coming mass production of the iPhone 14 because other suppliers can fill the supply gap. And then he mentions a couple of the suppliers and their plans. And then speaking of suppliers, he also gave us some insight of one of the new suppliers for this year to prevent those shortages. So on Twitter, he mentions that components from SG Micro have passed quality certification for the iPhone 14 Pro models. And then looking ahead next year to the iPhone 15, Quo recently published a Medium article where he reports that the iPhone 15 Pro Max will be the only iPhone that year to get the long-awaited periscope lens and that's going to be on the pro and pro max the following year on the 16 but at first it's going to be a pro max exclusive and this lens of course is the one that allows the samsung galaxy s22 ultra to have that 10x optical zoom and that 100x digital zoom and that could be a reality for the iphone as soon as next year and then a quick update on apple's upcoming ar vr headsets we're now hearing that a second generation model is already in development so this is according to et news they say that apple is planning a second generation model of this headset with substantial upgrades and it is already in development so apple will be entering mass production for the first generation of this mixed reality headset with a release date slated for early 2023 and when it does release apple will already be deep in development for the second generation of this headset so apple seems to be taking this mixed reality space very seriously which is even further proof that this new product launch is going to be massive 
for the company. One of the biggest product launches in Apple history, in my opinion. And speaking of massive, a massive lawsuit against Apple has just settled. And if you bought a MacBook from 2015 to 2019, you might be entitled to some cash. So according to Reuters, Apple has agreed to pay $50 million to settle a class action lawsuit by customers who claimed that it knew and concealed that the butterfly keyboards on its MacBook laptop computers were prone to failure. So customers claim that MacBook, MacBook Air, and MacBook Pro keyboards suffered from sticky and unresponsive keys, and that tiny amounts of dust or debris could make it difficult to type. They also said Apple's service program was inadequate because Apple often provided replacement keyboards with the same problems. So this settlement covers customers who bought MacBook, MacBook Air, and most MacBook Pro models between 2015 and 2019 in these states, California, Florida, Illinois, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, and Washington. Washington. Lawyers for these customers expect maximum payouts of $395 to people who replaced multiple keyboards, $125 to people who replaced one keyboard, and $50 to people who replaced keycaps. And then finally, let's talk about Johnny Ive and Apple's breakup because now they're completely done after a more than 30 year relationship. So Johnny Ive, of course, first left Apple in 2019. It was big news, but he did continue to work for the company as a consultant. So Apple signed a multi-year contract with him that was valued at more than $100 million. And under those terms, Apple was to be his primary client, but the deal restricted him from working on competing projects. So Ive and Apple were set to renew the contract this year, but they decided not to extend it any further. So rumors point to Ive wanting more freedom to choose his clients without you know, having to ask Apple if it's okay, along with simply not paying him enough. So the world may never know what really happened and why the partnership is completely over now, but Apple lost one of my favorite designers and probably one of the world's favorite designers of all time. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some additional features and changes found in iOS 16, the latest developer beta and the latest public beta. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 16 coverage coming very soon. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.